Hey folks. Greetings, beautiful people. It is week 10 of human growth and development. And this week you have one way to earn points. That's by participating in D5, our fifth discussion. You can get up to 10 points by making your initial posts by Thursday and replying to two or more class members by Sunday. And you'll notice that this post or this discussion is only worth 10 points because we've already um We've been talking a lot or having a lot of discussions in the first half of the term. And now that we're in week 10 and we only have six weeks left, we will still be having these discussions, but they'll be worth 10 points as opposed to 20 points like in the first half. This is consistent with what's in the syllabus. Um, we also may be able to eliminate one or two discussions at the very end of the semester or make those discussions optional or extra credit once I recalibrate and, and check out exactly how many points are uh, accounted for. All right, so I also posted P2, and P2 is not technically due until next week, but I posted it now because some people might wanna get started and, um, and get ahead. So P2 is really a two-part assignment. You are completing an annotated bibliography and an abstract. So to be clear, P2 is based on your individual paper, okay? Please don't confuse your individual paper with your group project. The group project was an assigned topic and you had assigned members and you've been working on this group project the entire semester. But because our class is a Gordon Rule class, that means we are required or mandated by the state to meet a certain word count um, minimum in this class. So that's why we have to have a paper. Instead of having one big, really long, obnoxious paper, I've broken into smaller chunks. So in P1, you identified your topic by identifying what you were interested in. You also um, figured out a research question. You talked about what your biases are, how much prior knowledge you had about the topic, and you really started fleshing out what you wanted to study, what you were interested in. And you picked a topic that was interesting to you, but relevant for a class on developmental psychology. So that was P1. And I know you guys are patiently waiting for me to grade P1. I've been really busy, okay? But I'm working on it and it's gonna get graded. So anyway, P2, which is due next week, you will take that same topic that you used in P1 and now you will find some credible resources. So when I say a credible resource, I mean a peer review journal article, okay? Or you might even use a TED Talk. Um, in some settings, TED Talks are not considered scholarly but i'm pretty lenient because most of the TED talks that you're going to probably want to include are by doctors lawyers social scientists and these people tend to have good credentials and they usually share information based on credible research research so anyway you're going to find some sources and then you're going to include the source in the apa format in the citation and then you're going to include a small little annotation an annotation is a summary or a brief description of that source and how you would use it in writing your paper. You basically get to evaluate the source. All right. The purpose of an annotated bibliography is to organize your thoughts and organize the research that you're doing. And when you start getting into really big papers, annotated bibliography could really be useful for you, a good tool. In kind of the undergrad early classes, it's not that big a deal, but I like to introduce students to it right away. So anyway, that's the first part, the annotated bibliography. And there's a rubric provided in Canvas for you so you can see exactly how you're graded. Um, the other part of P2 is the abstract. And the abstract is an, a, like a one to two paragraph overview of your entire paper. Now, mind you, you haven't written the paper yet. You're just doing a summary based on what you expect to write, okay? Kind of like it's forcing you to condense your thoughts and your understanding into a small little package. So P2, due next week, but if you want to get started now, by all means. Our topic for this week is adolescence. So you're reading chapters 9 and 10 in the course textbook, and you're learning about puberty, you're learning about identity, and it's a fascinating topic. A lot of people don't realize, but adolescence can span from like 13 to 21, and those ages are rough estimates. Some people could start adolescence slightly before that and end slightly after that. But it's a transitional period. It's a time when you're still figuring out who you are. It's a time when your body has an influx of hormones and changes, lots of changes. 
going from being a little kid to being an adult. And when you're an adolescent, you're not quite a kid and you're not quite an adult. So it's kind of like you're in limbo, right? So read all about those changes in chapters nine and 10 in your textbook. If you have questions, comments, compliments, or concerns, you know what to do. Drop it in the comments below or post it on Canvas in the questions thread and I will get back with you. For instance, someone posted a question about the extra credit and I really thought that I posted the extra credit for you, but I didn't. When I saw that question posted within 24 hours, I responded and posted the extra credit. So that discussion thread that's there for the entire semester, semester labeled questions is really there for you. If you post a question there, I trust me, I check it once a day, every day, Monday through Thursday. So I'm off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so you know I'm not checking it then. Anyway, um, that's pretty much all I have to say right now. Kind of you hear my doorbell ringing. So if you need to get in touch with me, send me an email, visit me during office hours, or leave it in the sections below. See you later.